Frequent flyers fly, la 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 la. Frequent flyers bat. What's up? You checking out the Frequent Flyer? Welcome back to the channel. Smash the like button to show your support. And if you're new to the channel, I'd like to extend a warm welcome. I invite you to subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you're notified whenever I release new content. Everything RC on this channel. This is my review of the Emacs Transporter 2 HD goggles. They're a box style goggle and they're different from the previous version in that this is a special version that has HD0. That's right, Emacs and HD0 combined to bring us this goggle, brand new. Oh, wait a minute, this is the older one. Brand new, playing around guys. I just did that to show you guys that this goggle casing is exactly the same as the previous one. Divi Math has a hand in developing this thing, I guess. But it came with Divi Math stickers and HD Zero stickers and Emacs stickers. And so I put that Divi Math sticker on top so I can tell the difference between the two. But they're identical. So they're swappable. <laughs> you can uh, use both goggle casing and all. But it's the exact same features and all. As far as the goggle casing being able to extend and all. So if you watched my last video on my uh, review of the Emacs Transporter 2 normal version, then everything applies to this one. It's the same exact box goggle casing. The main attraction is this part. It does come off as a monitor as well. But this one has HD zero. So it does have a fan right there because digital requires more power and needs more cooling because it gets hotter so this fan is pretty quiet it's not loud at all let me turn this thing on so you guys can hear the fan so that's the fan you should be able to hear that low whirling sound so not loud at all and i love this thing they did make a few other improvements Aside from it being digital, it does have USB type C now, and it does have that uh, recess taken care of. This was recessed on the original one, so I found it a little harder to eject the SD card, but now they made it flush, and it came with the same exact antennas. I added this triple patch antenna for better reception afar now one of the things that i don't like that they did is this screen here i don't know what they used to make it so soft but it seems like it's very prone to getting scratched up so check out this one and check out this one i had the original one longer a little longer than i had this one and this one has a bunch of little scratches on it and all same treatment of them both but this one is very prone to scratches i would say that uh it's good enough for digital, good enough for the digital feed to still look tons better than the analog feed. As soon as I turn it on, it usually locks right on the channel. But if I turn the goggle on first and then turn the quad on afterwards, it'll take a long time before it actually finds the channel. So you guys see it found the channel fairly quickly when I did it that way. But check out the image. The image is not bad at all. You might see a little breakup because I'm really close. And this screen doesn't do it any justice on video. It looks a lot uh, more colorful and clearer and all. You can go in and uh, change the settings and all as far as sharpness and brightness and hue and all of that type of stuff. And you can also... Oh, this does have a DVR. Actually, the DVR auto starts... So there's an option in there where you can turn that off though, but if it wasn't auto starting, you would hit this okay button. So all the buttons are on the back now. So I think that's okay, not too bad. The, the buttons on the original one were on the sides. And so the okay button is here. We have the on and off switch there. We have the menu button there. And the menu button doubles as the up selection and this is the down selection. So when you go into the menu, 
you can press this to go up and you press this to go down you press the OK button to select whatever you're trying to select and you hold down the menu button to get out of the menu another feature that is well welcomed by me <laughs> I really like the fact that you can change the recording formats so you can record in QuickTime MOV now I think that's QuickTime movie file and so now the program in my phone that I do editing with uh, accepts it and so I don't have to do any converting with a side third-party app or anything before I get this thing uh, inside my video editing program in order to uh, edit videos and all so I like that feature you can switch between regular mp4 and uh, the QuickTime move file when you're in the uh, connection with the VTX if you press these buttons it'll go up and down on channels and bands so let me turn this guy off I'm gonna turn this off and go into the menu I think they should use some Gorilla Glass 3 or something on here in order to stop those scuffs or whatnot. But I guess it's just, it might be just nitpicking because once the screen is on, you really don't see all of that. But it just looks bad when the screen gets dark. <laughs> and so you can see all those scratches and all. Still just about as reflective as the other one was. Oh, let me go into the menu here. So... Here we go. So we're in the menu now. And as you, I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, that's another thing. The menu is very, very small. So a guy who needs glasses like me struggled to see what the heck is going on with the menu there. <laughs> but as you can see on the top, it says scan. It has a playback mode for the DVR. You can format the SD card. You can record as soon as the VTX is connected with the feed and all, or you can manually record. You can turn auto on and off. And here's where you can change the file type there. Let me see if I can switch it. Okay, so I switched it to, I can't see what it says. TS, whatever that means. Then you can switch it again to the movie file. And so, Go down here and we have record OSD so you can have the OSD feed in the recording or not have it in the recording. You can turn auto scan on and off. So it auto scans when you first turn this thing on. I guess you can turn that off and just go to the channel yourself. And down here we have about so I guess that'll tell you about this product here there it is there this is diversity so it's not the four antenna feeds being that the battery is enduring the stress of this fan and all as well as the uh the monitor itself the workings of it the battery does die a little quicker than the original one let me check real quick and see if they have the size of the battery doesn't say on here what size the battery is but pretty awesome goggle i like the fact that Still has this mounting screw point on the bottom so you can attach this to various things. Love that. And uh, the antennas are still the same antennas as before. Not sure what it's called, but the antenna has the stem in it. And the hole is on the, uh, the monitor there, the goggle. Take that into consideration when you're buying antennas for this thing. Stock antennas, you will get good reception with it and all but when you're flying around trees and everything or flying kind of far you might need something like this a triple patch antenna to aim it towards uh the quad and all and get a little more range out of the uh signal there and so i think that's just about it the sd card goes in this slot here oh and it does come with this little cable to update the hd zero i have not updated anything but it plugs in right there and so, I don't know, maybe there's some upgraded firmware that I missed out on by not checking, but I've just been having fun flying with this thing. A blast to fly digital and awesome to have it in a very cheap price. <laughs> Warning, 
once you go digital though guys you're really not going to want to go back that's really true because uh, I, I feel like I just can't see sometimes when I'm flying the analog. This is the only digital system I have, a little uh, HD whoop or whatnot. So I really can't speak to how the experience is with a racing quad or a freestyle quad or something larger or even a 2S. But sheesh, just this little light system here is leaps and bounds better than... The analog signals, I really don't want to go back. I really think I want to convert all of my analog stuff to digital or just start buying digital for the rest of the things that I buy. The Emacs Transporter 2 HD goggle monitor combination. Making digital FPV affordable and awesome. <laughs> I think... To this day, it's still the only uh, monitor option that you have for digital FPV with HD0, if I'm not mistaken. Emacs got a winner in my book. Thanks for watching.